All right. Hello, everyone. Simon here. And um, wow, the webcam looks pretty bad because it is nighttime and the room is pretty dark. Anyway, so I've been thinking about making a game or a kind of an interactive story. If you've kind of been following my Minecraft things and my other ranting and other things, every so often I, I make one of these game design videos where I, I, I want to make a game, right? So I want to make a game. I've been spending a lot of time writing the script. I'm about three quarters of the way through the script, and it's about 30,000 words, a bit more than 30,000 words. So it's, it's, there's a big script. I'm going to write a big story. And uh, I've been doing that, and it's taking a long time. And I, I thought, well, maybe it's about time to start looking at the game engine, start kind of making the actual game. So I was thinking about using RPG Maker, thinking about using RPG Maker, and it, this is not working out. It's not working out because every time I start RPG Maker, I look at it and I think there's a lot of stuff here that I don't want. And there's a lot of stuff that I want that I have to program in myself. And it just it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. RPG Maker is not a good program, unfortunately. I mean, I want it to be a good program, but there's a, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just not that good. If you've used it before, you might kind of get what I'm trying to say. It's not. You know, it's not impossible, I just don't think it's the right thing for me. So the next thing I thought, well, I need to kind of make a game engine then, or I need to use something. So I've been looking at, let me just go to this. I've been looking at, um, this is Game Maker Studio, uh, about Game Maker, Game Maker Studio. So I've, I, I, I did this. So you can see if I zoom out here, oops, don't do that. If I zoom out, so I went ahead and I kind of blocked in the map of the town that's going to be the setting for the story that I want to tell. If you can kind of recognize this from the Minecraft videos I made. And so I kind of put all this stuff in and then I put a bit of basic scripting in. And then, so I got to this point, which took me a, a little while to get started because I've never used Game Maker before. I think it took me about two hours to get this far just to, um, you know, learn enough about Game Maker to do this stuff, right? And I got to this point. This is all, obviously this is not the final product. It's not what the final things. The final thing is not going to look like this. But you know, I, I, press, I press the arrow keys, and I can get this thing walking around. And so after two hours, I realized. Well, I mean, there's no collision yet. That's kind of weird too. So, but after two hours or so, first of all, the the town is way too big. And you know, you can't see anything. And secondly, this isn't actually what I want, or it's not actually what I need because. I want to tell a story. If you've played games like To the Moon or Dear Esther or Gone Home, those are the three, I guess, uh, that the, one, the ones that I've played, which kind of is, is in line with what I'm trying to, trying to do. There, there is a lot of walking in those games. But the more I think about it, the more I thought, I don't, I don't actually need walking. Walking is not part of the game. Like, walking is not a, it's not a thing that helps me tell my story. I just want to tell the story. It's going to be people talking to other people, and that's it. Like you talking to other people, other people talking to, to each other, that's going to be the story that I'm going to tell. So walking doesn't actually contribute to it at all. So then I I, I forgot, so I, I did, we're going to forget about this. And we're not going to do any walking. So then I thought about it, what, what do I really need? What I really need is some kind of menu system, not not actual menu system, but some way for the char so there's gonna the the, the story is gonna be divided into twelve months. Each month, you can talk to each person in the town, and that's that's the like that's that's the this is the frame right, and so within that framework, there's a story. So you you find the story by going to each person and talking to each person, and so we need the town map. And we need to click on the buildings to go find the people, and then there's a there's a conversation at each building as you talk to a person or, or multiple people, and you go back to the town map to go to a different building, talk to a different set of people, and so on and so forth. And so that's what I need. I need a town map, and then at each location, I need a a uh, a container or like a, a template for conversations. And that's it. Like if we if we just break down what I want to do to its most essential elements, that's what I need. So I don't need any walking. Walking is is not a part of what I want to do. So um, forget this. 
and also Game Maker Studio, it's good. It doesn't feel as good as Unity. So what I've been doing is I've been going to Unity, and I've been trying to kind of get some sort of menu system like what I'm thinking about. This is placeholder art. Do you like my artwork? This is my drawings. So in Unity, uh, Unity recently put in Unity 2D. So Unity 3D, if you know Unity, it's a, it's a 3D game engine, mostly. But you can do 2D things with it. And they're kind of expanding their 2D palette. So I figured, well, since I'm doing 2D things, well, I might as well try it out. So if we do, if we uh, go and build and run on this, I've been kind of working with the scripts and kind of putting some buttons together and then trying to get, you know, getting from a, a main map over to kind of smaller areas where you talk to people. So if you kind of keep that in mind, so I mean, you click on the house, this person says blog de blog de blog, and then page two, hum hum hum, page three, beep boop beep boop, and then you click and you go back. And that's basically what I need. That's basically what I need. So it's not complicated. It's just buttons and, and screens, and trying to fit that together in uh, in a game engine. So actually, let me just close this. We can do a very similar thing in uh, game in Game Maker if we open Project Test Five. So if we go to Game Maker, and this is a much simpler version of it. So if we just want kind of images and buttons, we can do that. So this is Room Zero. Room one, you can kind of just click the buttons. These are buttons. This is a button, by the way, and that's a button. <laughs> you can't, you can't really tell because the placeholder art is so terrible. Uh, this is me kind of trying out the the hitbox. So all the buttons have rectangular hitboxes, and so I was kind of hoping to make weird shapes for buttons. But if you kind of click there, it's still a button, right? So the the, the ideal thing is if only the purple bit is the button, but in fact the whole rectangle is the button. That's that's a bit of a problem because the town map is going to be isometric and so none of the buttons are actually going to be square or rectangular. Anyway, so if you just want to do that, it's quite easy, even in Game Maker. And there's rooms and there's buttons, right? You can just kind of make objects. Although it, it feels like... See, what I really want is pages. Like, you know, every, every game engine has certain abstractions, right? And in in Game Maker, the abstraction is rooms. You take sprites, you t you make objects out of sprites, and then you put the objects in the rooms. That's the abstraction in Game Maker. And so and so you have rooms, which if you're making a a game, that makes sense, because you know each room can be a level, right? This this is like a if you're making like a dungeon game or a roguelike, then then rooms kind of make sense. But I don't want rooms, I want pages, because I'm, I'm making more like a book. I'm making more like a book where, where you have stories, although it's not a, you know, if you read a book front to back, then it's just one story, whereas I, I'll have different kind of pages for different characters, and you don't necessarily have to read them in order. right? So it's, it's not quite like a book, but it's more like a book than, than rooms. So, I mean, I can make each room a chapter, or you know, I can make each room a month, I guess. But then there's actually quite a lot of pages in each each month. Or I can, anyway, that's the abstraction. We're trying to trying to fit a book into rooms. Whereas if we look at um, Unity, Unity has scenes. So this is this is scene one. This is scene two. And then within each scene, you have the objects. And because we're doing using two D UI elements, game one, we're using the two UI elements. We have canvases, and each canvas is like a set of things. You can put things in the canvas. So here, the image, which is the background image, is part of the canvas. The button is the house. That thing's the button. And then the text is also, I mean, that's just debug text. That's not nothing useful at, not at the moment. So you can kind of put buttons and pictures and text into a canvas, and then you can kind of manipulate the canvas as a whole thing, which if we go to scene two, it makes more sense here because you have Canvas page. So I set it up so that it's canvas page, canvas page one, canvas page two, canvas page three, and so if we kind of turn off these things one at a time, then you can see. So this is page one of the text, which includes the button, by the way. 
and then we're going to turn off page two. I mean, turn off page one and turn on page two, and then that's page two. So then here, each each scene would be a building in the town, I guess, and then the the town map would be a scene itself, and then each set of scenes will will be a month, and then each canvas in the scene will be a page of text. So does that make sense? I hope the the abstraction kind of follows. Anyway, so I the the other thing about all of this is that Unity feels right to me. You know, like like the the same way that RPG Maker feels wrong in the sense that it just feels like it's not what I want to make. Unity it seems just just seems easy to use and it just seems to fit what I want to do. It's also JavaScript, so the programming language. It's either C sharp or JavaScript for Unity, whereas the game maker it's got its own language, and it's it's like if you learn a new language and you can only use it in game maker, then it's not that useful. Whereas JavaScript you can use it in a lot of a lot of different places, so JavaScript is more useful to learn. So I feel like if I want to learn something, why don't I just learn Unity because it's going to be more useful than game maker in the long run. So there's that as well. Um, so that's the plan. And that's what I've got so far. So we've got the buttons. We've got we use kind of scenes to to sort our things or you know our contents. So the next thing that I want to do is to make a make like a template. So if you've got a scene one, so uh, don't save that. So so get the town map onto the screen. Wire up all the buildings as buttons, and then each of each of those buttons goes to another scene. Where it's the building, and you can have a conversation at that building, and you can also go back. And so then I want to wire this up so that I have at least one month, like a template for a month, and then I can just slot in the artwork, and the dialogue, and the sound, and then and kind of wire up the buttons, and then everything's gonna just fit. So I want to make like a template for for the for each month of the twelve months that I'm gonna tell the story in, right? So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do it right now. If you are not interested in code, then you can just kind of stop watching. If you're interested in code, then I'm going to go through the code now, just in case you're interested in how I'm wiring this up. So, just before we go with Unity, so the here, the scripting is actually kind of easy. So if we look at these objects, this button, so there's a very kind of handy graphical user interface for your scripting. So this button, it's a sprite, event, left button, so you can add event, mouse, left button is what this one is, or you can kind of have keyboard actions, or whatever it is. And then here, if, if, if the left mouse button is clicked on this object, the action is go to room 1. So easy. And then the other button is go to room 0. Right, and the object. This one doesn't have anything; it's just text. So then, in room zero, we just drop this stuff in. We just drop this one in. When you click on it, it goes to room one. And then in room one, we drop this one in. If you click on this one, you go to room zero, and so it just goes back and forth. So you just kind of make make buttons, make unique buttons for each script, and then you just kind of drop them into into the right place, and everything fits together. So it's quite simple. But also in a way unwieldy because when you get to a point where you have, well maybe it's okay. Anyway, it's, it's, so when you get to a point where you have like the town has how many how many buildings does the town have? Like nineteen, I think nineteen places. No, twenty. There's a beach too. Twenty places, and then there's twelve months. So there's like two hundred forty different rooms. Is that what I'm trying to do? Or maybe if you have like 12 rooms anyway so you end up having if we have 240 rooms and then we have maybe we we i don't know 20 pages of text just in case there's a really long story in one of them so 20 pages of text in each room so 20 times 240 is 4000 something 4800 Different locations. Do we then need four thousand eight hundred different buttons? I, we probably don't need that many, but 
I can kind of imagine it becoming quite unwieldy if we use rooms. Anyway, it, it feels wrong. It feels wrong. I can't really. I, I, I'm not sure it's going to work the way I want it to work. Whereas here, um, the thing with Unity is that a lot of this stuff is reusable. So I have three scripts here. This script, it turns on and off the, uh, the pages. So this one is applied to scene two. So you can kind of see the scripts here. So this one turns the pages on and off, right? So, oh crap, that's the way, well, this is the scripting interface for the uh, program. What is this? What does that say? Error trying to load. Why is that? Object reference not set to an instance of an object. Did I load fail? Which one did I? I don't know which one failed. Anyway, so if you look at this one, which is the text pages, so at the start, we turn on page one. So you see canvas P1 enabled equals true. So page one is enabled, page two is disabled because it's false. Page three is disabled. You click on the go to page one button. It sets page one to enabled and the other to disabled. You click on the page two button. It sets page two to enabled and the other one is disabled. Go to page three button. So then you can use this script on every single scene because every scene will have a number of canvases and you might need buttons to go between each page or between each canvas in the scene and then you just you can just kind of write the script once and then apply it to every single scene and then wire up the buttons for that scene and each each scene will have different content on each canvas but the way the buttons interact with the canvases you can reuse the code so it, it does that make sense it makes a lot of sense to me and it does work I promise. So there's that. And then the the next script is the button overs. Oh, this is the, the complicated stuff. I mean, this is slightly complicated. So change scene. These are the buttons that go between the scenes. So here, go scene one, application low level, scene one. So it basically just kind of loads a different scene. The other stuff here is, um, remember how the we said an error before, is it going to crash? No. We just remember how all the button hitboxes are rectangular. That's how it is in Unity as well. So all the buttons, it assumes that it's just a rectangle. But you notice that this is not a rectangular hitbox. This is an actual pixel by pixel hitbox. So you, if you kind of, if you're on the house, it highlights. If you're off the house, it doesn't. So there's a rectangular hitbox around the house, which you can't see. But if you click on the hitbox, I mean, if you click on the 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 the, 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 the boundary of the of the sprite, it doesn't actually activate. Only if you click on the actual house does it activate. So so this is not a function that this is not a it's not a a, a a behavior that is available in Unity, right? It's only possible because we have this script here, and this script, which is the button overs, actually no, it's the change scenes. Basically, it says if you click on the button, then it will check whether your mouse position, given that it is your mouse position modified by the resolution of the screen, whether that compared with the position, well, modified, okay, your mouse position modified by the resolution of the screen, modified by the location of the button and modified by the uh, actually no, this is this is the uh, the size of the texture it checks if the alpha which is the transparency of that pixel on that button texture is transparent so if it's transparent or if, if it's not transparent then it will load the next scene but if you click on the button but the pixel you're clicking on is transparent, then it does not load the next scene. So basically, I'm, I have to script in custom behavior on the button because the button by itself is just a rectangle. But I want the the button to not be a rectangle. Therefore, the transparent bits are not part of the button. And so 
when you click on the transparent part of the buttons, it doesn't actually do the load scene. It only it's only when you click on a, a pixel that actually is is not transparent that it goes through anyway. So that's just what we have to do in order to make sure that the buttons can be in irregular shape and that the transparent bits don't count as part of the button. So this is you know math. Maybe this is a bit more complicated than it needs to be. It's actually less complicated than it could be because this this particular math only works if the you don't scale the button and if you don't rotate the button in any way and if, if the screen resolution is, is only ten by nine and not any other proportions. So if you have any other if you kind of if you transform the button in any way or if your resolution is not the right size then the math doesn't actually work. So this is it's, it's not the bad it's not the best algorithm in the world, but it works for now. I need to figure out something better maybe in the future. So you have to do that to to check whether or not the button is the, the, whether the part of the button you clicked on is transparent. But you can do that, right? You can do that with scripting. I, I, I would prefer if Unity actually had irregular buttons or the, the ability to have to ignore transparent bits in the, in the sprite or stuff like that. But since Unity doesn't provide that out of the box, we have to write that in for ourselves. So there, if you look at the script, you see this script, uh, not this script, if you see this script here, button overs, this one controls the uh, the fact that when you hover the mouse over the thing, it changes color. So you assign button as button 01. So this one, this the house, is the button, button 01. And then you assign the texture the placeholder texture as the texture in the script. And then here in in the variables, you kind of you tell the script, okay, we need a button, we need a texture, and then we we kinda need debug text, but we don't. And so so ignore these two. Actually let me just comment these out because we don't need those right now. Although maybe I should um comment those two out. Alright. So so we tell the the game. Oh, actually, we. Oh, this is already. I'm looking at the wrong script. My bad. So the button overs in the change scene they they do similar things. Change scene actually changes the scene. The button overs changes the color. So here, the highlighted color changes to yellowish, and then otherwise it would turn the highlighted color back to white, which you know, just makes it a different color when you hover over it. Cool. So. So yes, you, you you tell the game that. So you in the script you say there's gonna be a button and it's gonna be a texture, and then in the Unity interface you tell the the script what like which object is the button you're talking about and which texture is the texture you're talking about, and then it just kind of puts all that stuff together. Let me just build that because I just commented out a couple of them. Um, text boxes. So once that's done, we should see the text disappear there if it works. Why is it not why is it not doing anything? Um is that correct? Change scene fail to load. Object reference not set to an instance of object. I'm not sure what's going on here. I hope I can I just save all. Convert the line endings. No, keep line endings. This should update. Maybe I need to reload the scene. UI scripts. Okay, so the text, the 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 the, uh, the debug text is gone. The debug text basically, you see the mouse x, mouse y here, and you see the x, y, and alpha. It's just me trying to figure out the math. So I. I need the game to tell me what the mouse position is and what the alpha is at that position, just so I can figure out where where I'm actually clicking. Because if you get the math wrong, then the game thinks the button is in a different place from where the button actually is, and you can't see it. Anyway, um, is that pretty much everything? That's pretty much everything. It took me a while to figure this out because I, you know, I, I haven't used Unity much before, but it it's not it's not terrible. Because I managed to figure it out in a few hours, so it's not like it's not that complicated. It's like starting from scratch, starting from nothing. Although I, I mean, I, I know a bit of Java, but just kind of starting 
with Unity from scratch, getting to this point took a few hours. That's pretty good. I mean, in terms of you know how much work you have to put in to to make a game, that, that's not bad. Not 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 bad progress, right? So uh, yeah, that's what I have so far. I don't know if you guys want to see any more. I, what I can do now is put in an, another scene and just wire it up, so you can kind of see how things work. All right, maybe I should do that. So if I take this and I say copy and paste that, let's say go scene three, and then oh, we need two buttons. We need multiple buttons. Oh, this is going to be complicated. Hmm. All right. Well, we're going to test scene three. Let me just duplicate this scene. Can I uh, not duplicate this? Create? No. I want to create scene. How do I? Can I just copy and paste? No. If I go to uh, assets here, scenes, I can copy and paste this, but there's meta stuff. I don't know if it, it's going to be a problem, but I just copy and paste that. And call it scene 3. Does that actually work? Uh, let me change this to um, 3. Save. So that's okay. This is a different scene, even though it looks the same. So you, okay, you just copy and paste. That's cool. Uh, scene three. We need more than one button, though, don't we? So let me just come over here and go variable. The button. I need. I need better variable names. I know that. So a second button. UI. What do you? UI, it keeps doing that. Be like it's try, it's, it keeps trying to auto complete, even though I only want UI button. And then the uh, button texture two, texture two D, right? So we need a second button, which is all right, cool. And then here we need to change these variables. So the button two, button two, button texture two. Hmm. So here's the thing: for every button on screen, we need a. Well, maybe we don't. The only reason we need this is because I'm I'm not putting these into a function. Maybe I should put these into a function. Do I still need these if I? I do, don't I? Okay, I do. I do still need separate variables for each button and each button texture. But I can put, probably put this into a function, so I don't have to copy and paste this all the time. Uh, if button texture two get pixel low level. All right, so there's that. Let me save this. And then in scene one, we are going to duplicate this. Button two, awesome. And we're gonna move button two over here, right? Let's save that. So let's just call this two for now. We're just gonna change the uh, the text here just so that we know what we're looking at because they are actually otherwise identical. Save, and then here UI scripts. The button two is button two, and button texture is actually the same texture. So we we tell the game what the button is and what the texture is. We wrote the script to go to the next one. Uh, we don't have the mouse overs, button overs. We don't have this for the. Actually, can I put in a a different? Button overs. Can I put in? All right. So there's two copies of the same script. I hope this doesn't 
mess up the the game. All right, so if I do that, and then the button behavior here, change scene, go to scene three. So if you remember back here, scene three, go scene three, goes to scene three, obviously. So now we have two copies of buttons over. We have change scene, text pages we don't need to work with. All right, so now we test this, build and run. Hope it doesn't crash. Please don't crash. All right, it doesn't crash. So we start here. Now we have two buttons. Amazing. So you can see how you can just kind of put another instance of the same script and then put the, put the second button onto that script. You can just kind of reuse the script. You see what I mean? You can just reuse these scripts. Once you write them once, you kind of reuse them wire up different different assets to the same script and then they'll just add that behavior to that asset. So now this you know this kind of changes color when you hover over it and this kind of changes color when you hover over it. This goes to page two two and this goes to page ah this is broken. This is broken. Why is that broken? Test scene three oh Oh, okay, this. In your build settings, you have to make sure you add all the scenes. This took me so long to find out. When you build the thing, it doesn't just automatically add all the scenes. You have to actually choose which scenes to, to build. Like if you don't... If you don't tell the... the compiler which scenes to add, it won't, it won't add the scenes. So because scene 3 was missing, um, there was no scene 3 when I click on the button. right? So now that the scene 3 is in there, we click on this, takes us to 3. So you, you remember what I was saying about the template? It's like this is a template, because we can just make that once, copy and paste it, and then wire each copy to a new button, and then it will just take us to that, to that room or to that scene. Right, and so it just feels right. Like uh, the, the Unity just feels right. Like we just kind of expanded this crappy game we have with this guy saying bloody bloody blog. We just expanded the bloody bloody blog from a from a from a menu and room to menu and two rooms, and you can see we can just kind of add more and more rooms very easily, and then we just kind of copy the copy and paste the whole thing to have the next month and so on and so forth. So it just it, it feels like we can get quite far quite quickly using Unity. And that's all I have right now to talk about. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and wire up the whole thing. So as I said, the game is going to take place over the course of a year, 12 months. There's going to be 12 chapters, as it were. And then within each chapter, there's a number of conversations or a number of kind of places where conversations can take place and so I wanted to wire up one month so that we have the menu and a number of different conversations or you know the kind of pages for conversations and each one would be I can just open this up uh, not assets and it will pretty much be like this but obviously with different graphics it would, it would literally work exactly like this. I mean, of course, I made this because I wanted it to work like this. And then you can go in, there'll be multiple pages, maybe like 30 pages. I don't know how long my... I should look at how long the, the my, my script is and how long my, my dialogues are. And then you... and then you're done and you go back. And there'll be kind of dialogue options, but that's quite easy because then you just kind of put in extra buttons. And you can have like option, option one, option two, option three, and then you just go to a different page depending on which option you choose. So again, it's just buttons, buttons and pages. It's just buttons and pages the whole the whole way through. Yeah. And so I want to wire, try and wire up a template. That's my next thing to do. All right, I'm going to stop recording here, I think. Anything else I want to say? No. Uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope none of you are disappointed that there's going to be no walking. <laughs> I mean... 
there's no walking. It's just going to be clicking on, 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 on buildings, clicking on people, reading dialogue, making choices in the dialogue, and then going back. And there's no walking. I think that's actually a good idea, to be perfectly honest. I don't think the walking added very much to, to the moon. I don't think the walking really added much to, uh, what's it called? Gone Home. It's a bit weird. Have you played Gone Home? I haven't uploaded it yet. I've recorded Gone Home. I'm gonna, I should upload it pretty soon. But it, it's a bit strange, Gone Home, because like, you walk around and you kind of rummage through people's drawers to find things to read. But the walking is, is kind of, it's, 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 there's, no, there's no real reason to be walking around because you, the whole thing is just about reading about this person's life. Like kind of reading bits of text to find out about this person's life. There's not even real people in the house. It's just you alone in the house rummaging through other people's stuff to find things to read. It's a little bit strange, right? I mean, it's a little bit strange to rummage through someone else's house. Anyway. Um, dear Esther, at least the environments are like, they're like 3D and they're really beautiful. And you, you get something out of walking through those beautiful environments. But still, if, if you took out the walking somehow, I, I don't think you would lose all that much from Dear Esther. Maybe you would, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, yeah. No walking, and then why, why make things more complicated than they need to be, right? Alright, I'm going to stop rambling there. I don't know when I should do the next video. It might take a while. It might be a long video, or maybe I can split that up into multiple ones. Because I, I kind of want to record the whole thing, just to kind of show you what I do. Anyway, I'll, I'll figure it out. Maybe in the next couple of days I'll, I'll do it. Uh, Alright, I'll see you.